good morning welcome a very warm welcome back to another weekly reading vlog we're actually starting this one off on tuesday today is tuesday february something i'm actually very excited this is going to be a very short little talk because we are finally out of lockdown here um at least where i am right now i'm so incredibly excited because it's been i think since december 26 that we've been in lockdown so i am going up today finally for the first time in forever to like an actual store like obviously i go for walks every day but um i'm going to a thrift store with my mom and i'm very excited because books i'm really gonna try not to buy any books but like this particular thrift store this one has books that are incredibly inexpensive like it would be a crime to leave them there <laughs> i mean i could pay a whole like quarter for a book or a couple quarters for a book can you believe that um but they also have clothes and i've been meaning to slowly try to kind of get some more spring and summer wear because most of my closet is honestly just like sweaters long sleeves sweatpants that's something i want to do and i also wanted to kind of film like a cottage core clothing haul or something like that because that seems like a really fun thing to do as well and i just always love going to thrift stores because it is like such an adventure and i always find really really fun cool stuff like this this place is where i got um, my red cloak that you may have seen i think yeah maybe you've seen it but yeah all right let's go find <laughs> some books okay guys i'm filming in public can you believe this i'm really a changed person currently looking for some more debate clues maybe i love this one that's so hard to look at okay we're gonna try this on Okay, we're gonna try these on. Are these fake? These are fake pockets. No, you gotta what? open them up, I think. No, no, Grandma, they're sewn. Uh, Shut, how dare they? Oh my gosh. Okay, what if I just wanna wear this? Like, unironically. Can I ask for this? <laughs> this bottle. What would I even put in here? Magic potions. <laughs> mm, okay, so they have the bone season. This really nice addition. I actually got rid of this, um, but maybe I should give it another try. I don't know. Okay, yes. Onion rings. Hi, how are you? Do you yes. want mustard? Yes, mustard. Yes.
All right, guys, I'm back. It's the next day and I'm very excited to talk about all the books that I got. I think I got seven books. Yes, if I'm counting that correctly, seven books for seven dollars. That's pretty good. I just thought we could go through them all. You are falling over. Yeah, so I just thought we would go over all of them and I could talk about them and yeah, I'm just really excited about it. So let's just start with the first one. Um, this one really caught my eye because it was very small. And also this cover is beautiful. This cover is gorgeous. It looks like some cottage court thing, but this is the Dover Thrift edition of Elizabeth Barrett Browning's Sonnets from the Portuguese and other poems. So I've never read Elizabeth's work. I've only read from her husband, Robert Browning. I've read my Last Duchess, I've had to study that a few times in school, and I think I've read something else from him, but I've never read any of her work, so I thought it was about time, and this just seemed like a really good introduction because this is a collection of her poetry. I believe Sonnets from the Portuguese, I think it says it was written on her honeymoon or something like that, um, and Sonnets from the Portuguese is her best known remarkable series of 44 love poems published in 1850, written by her for her husband during the early years of their relationship. Their obvious sincerity, gentleness, and passion, and the devotion and gratitude they express have made the poems popular favorites with generations of readers. So yeah, but there are more than that in here. There's a bit from her earlier works, I think. Yes. Um, and a bit from her later works as well, as well as her final, final poems. So it says that the present anthology attempts to be fair to the full scope of her inspiration. So very much looking forward to reading this. I've heard lots of really good things about Elizabeth Barrett Browning, and I just think it's so time to read some of her amazing work. So that is the first one I picked up. It was just so cute and tiny, and I think this is gonna be a really, really good introduction. So that is that one. The next book is also very small. It's so cute. It really also caught my eye. Look at this, so cute. Um, this is The Clothing of Books. This is a nonfiction by Lahiri, and the back as well really caught my interest because it says, if the process of writing is a dream, the book cover represents the awakening, which I thought, which I thought was really cool. So this is a nonfiction all about the cover design of books and what goes into the process of making a book cover, a dust jacket, the relationship between author and design, the relationship between reader and audience, and what maybe compels them to pick up a book and stuff like that and the little synopsis just sounded really interesting I believe it's kind of in an essay style format it says it explores the art the book jacket from the perspectives of both reader and writer probing the complex relationships between text and image author and designer and arts and commerce Lahiri delves into the role of the uniform explains what book jackets and designs have come to mean to her and how sometimes the covers become a part of her it's just this really cute small little essay book this is translated from the italian i believe and yeah I'm just really excited about this one. So I hope I'll be able to get around to this one really, really soon because I think I've heard about this somewhere as well. Maybe it's from Ariel's channel. I really don't remember, but I think I have heard of this. Next up, I picked this one because I've read from this author before and I just want to read more of their work and that is Michael and Dachi. This is The English Patient. Um, I read Warlight in 2020, really, really loved it. And I would just like to, I think slowly work my way through his works. So The English Patient is another historical novel uh, set during World War II and we're following a group of people in here. We have a young Canadian nurse, we have this I think unidentified man who's this, this kind of unknown stranger who is the English patient and his identity is kind of a mystery but I believe he is yes he's burnt beyond recognition and we also have a Sikh bomb disposal expert and a thief turned spy. So it's the story of these four people and how they connect um, during World War II, I believe. It says, sweeping from the romantic world of the great desert explorers to a glittering pre-war Cairo, from England during the Blitz to an abandoned villa in Tuscany, the English patient sets love and passion against the devastation of war and the politics of nations. Yes. So that is that one. This one actually won the Booker Prize as well as the Governor General's Award, which is a Canadian book award. And I did mention that I do want to read more Canadian um, books in 2021. So yeah, that's really interesting. I believe this was published in like 1992 or three, one of those. So I do also think it's a movie unless I'm totally getting that wrong, but I think that's what my mom said. So anyway, that is The English Patient. I know a lot of people adore this one. So very much looking forward to this one. 
Next, I found some more poetry. This cover is just really gorgeous. Can we take a second? It really caught my eye as well. This is Alice Walker, a uh, collection of her newer poetry, I believe from like 2018 or something like that. Yes, and it is called Taking the Arrow Out of the Heart. Um, and it is just a collection of poetry. It says, taking the arrow out of the heart uh, examines our troubled times while also chronicling a life well lived. From poems of painful self-inquiry to celebrating the simple beauty of everyday life, Walker offers us a window into her magical, at times difficult and liberating world of activism, love, hope, and above all, gratitude. Whether she's urging us to preserve an urban paradise or behold the delicate necessity of beauty to the spirit, Walker demonstrates that she remains a revolutionary poet and an inspiration to generations of fans. So I've never read Alice Walker. I know the color purple is just, ooh, I just really, really want to get to the color purple. I've heard so many people say so many things about it, um, but I've never read it. And I'm not sure if I should start with a collection of her poetry or start with a novel or something, but um, as for right now, this is the only Alice Walker on my shelves and I'm really, really happy about it. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna be wonderful, beautiful, heartbreaking, and yeah, okay. So that is that poetry collection as well. This one I picked up simply because it's a classic and I wanna read all the classics from everywhere and also, um, it was a dollar for like a penguin black spine classic which never happens so it's james joyce and it is portrait of an artist portrait of the artist as a young man so this i believe i like kind of detect <laughs> some similarities between this and for example childhood boyhood youth by tolstoy because it kind of blurs the lines between autobiography fiction narrative how do you construct a different reality and how much of it is infused with your own because portrait a portrait of the artist as a young man is about well it's kind of about james joyce but it portrays stephen dedalus's who is the main character his dublin childhood and youth and in doing so provides an oblique self-portrait of the young james joyce at its center are questions of origin and source authority and authorship and the relationship of an artist to his family culture and race so the only james joyce i've read is um the dead which is a short story in his larger collection called Dubliners. I had to read that a couple years ago, I think for uni. I really liked it, honestly. And I thought maybe a portrait of the artist was a bit of a better place to start than with something heavier like Ulysses. Um, so yeah, this is of course very famous as well. And I'm just really, really, really excited about it because I have not, well, I've read a little bit of Irish literature, but um, not very much from Joyce, like I said. So very much looking forward to this one too. Okay, we've got two more. This one is The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenides. Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides, which was released after. Um, this one was a recent addition to my shelves that came in my PO box, so thank you so, so much. But The Virgin Suicides is the one I've actually heard about from Eugenides. I've never heard of Middlesex, um, although they both sound like books I really, really want to read. But this one, I think I heard about it first because of the movie, right? This is a movie, yeah. Um, this was published in 1993, and in it we are following five sisters who one after the other uh, commit suicide in a quiet suburb in Detroit. They are beautiful, eccentric, and obsessively watched by the neighborhood boys. As the boys observe them from afar, transfixed, they piece together the mystery of the family's fatal melancholy in this hypnotic and unforgettable novel of adolescent love, disquiet, and death. So, um, yeah, this one I've just heard so much about, but I've never really known, like, what exactly is in it. So when I thought, when I thought it, <laughs> <sighs> So when I saw it at the thrift store, I decided that I should give it a go. So that is this one. This is, I think, the Vintage Canada. Yes, the Vintage Canada edition. Last book, let me explain myself a little bit because this is a book that I've read before. I've read this before. And I used to own it and I actually, what? And I actually unhauled it um, a while ago because I hated it. I did not like this book at all. I gave it two stars. But because of a certain someone that I watch on booktube all the time, I listen to every single one of her videos all the time. And so I'm just constantly being bombarded with this particular book series because it is her favorite series of all time. So when I saw it at the thrift store, I just, my heart caved in um, and I decided to just get it for a buck, 
one buck, one loony. How could I not? Okay, anyway, it's The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. So this is Ashley's favorite series ever from A Frolic Through Fiction. And like I said, I'm just constantly getting <laughs> all of the Bone Season um, love from her. I know the fourth book just came out and everyone's been freaking out about that. So I just thought this is a book that I would maybe give a second chance to. Also, this is an absolutely stunning, like brand new copy. Like it's not even been opened before. The spine is perfect. So um, I just thought it was a perfect time. So The Bone Season, I read this in October of 2019. This is actually one of the last books that I read for myself before I got my concussion, which is interesting to think about. But um, this fall, this is also, okay, why I didn't like this book. I thought this was like one of the most, if not the most info dumpy books I've ever read in my life. There is an incredibly complicated system in this book because we are following a girl named Paige Mahoney and she is a clairvoyant. But in this world, in the future, it's 27, no, 2077, 2059. We're not at cyberpunk yet. And she is a clairvoyant, but in this world, clairvoyants are outlawed. Their existence is illegal. So her being alive is basically a crime, but she has found work for like a criminal underworld. So she works for these like powerful people in Scion, London, which is what London has now become in the future, I guess. But um, she's also a dream walker and her job is to scout for information by breaking into people's minds. And dream walkers are extremely rare um, forms, rare kinds of clairvoyance. Um, and yeah, so every day basically she does she just commits treason until one day she is captured and brought somewhere else and these people have different plans for her. Anyway, it was just so incredibly like way too much. Like when you even open this book, there's like so many different kinds of clairvoyance. It's like the seven orders of clairvoyance or something, and it was just like it was just too much. It didn't feel natural at all to me. I thought the writing was extremely sloppy. Um, boring, super, super long, repetitive, dry, tasteless, substanceless, but tried to give itself so much substance by injecting it with these like hugely, vastly complicated and varied and populated um, kinds of like supernatural abilities. I don't know. Like I said, that, that was what, over a year and a half ago now. So yeah, around there. So I thought I would give it another go. I've heard so much about it recently and I do really, really want to love it. That being said, I adore um, Priory of the Orange Tree, which is Samantha Shannon's um, fantasy, standalone fantasy for the moment. And I loved it. So I just think she was, this was her first work. She was super, super young. I believe she was still an undergrad at Oxford, Cambridge. I think it was one of those two, Cambridge. So I just think there's a lot of chance for her to improve and grow as an author as the series goes along. Uh, it's a very long series as well so yeah anyway this is the last book i got so yeah let me know what you guys think about those <laughs> um if any of you have read any of them or just which ones i should start with i guess but um as for right now i'm gonna put them away on my bookshelves clearly we have tons of room and then i need to answer some emails and read i'm gonna read today i just want today to be so cozy i had a disastrous morning that's what we're gonna do
Good evening, good evening. It is 7.34 on Wednesday, February 23rd, and I've been doing a little bit here and there today. I went and fed the geese again. Um, I cut up the little almonds that I was giving them like into very small little bite-sized pieces, so they really enjoyed that. They are so sweet, at least for right now, until it's like baby season and then they will chase you. It's like a right in every, I think, Canadian person's childhood to be chased and hunted down and stalked and <laughs> run after by geese. I've been, I've been chased by geese many a time. Um, <laughs> the last time was in my first year of uni. I was on my way to my English exam, my final, and <laughs> I got I got too close to a pair of geese, two lovebirds, and they very quickly turned into hate birds, ang angry birds. <laughs> um, yeah, that was horrifying. Never so much panic or fear as when a Canadian goose decides to give you a scare. Okay, anyway, I've read a lot of Snow Today by Pamuk. I'm on page 53 now. Just utterly incredible. I just, I'm, ah. Uh, it's really affecting me. Um, I'm really, really loving this. I'm still loving the writing. I just, I don't know. It's really what I, what I want. The writing is incredible. The imagery, the symbolism, the, ah, uh, just the infection of everything in this book. Like I said, the atmosphere of the snow and everything to do with the snow is just absolutely incredible. The political aspects of this novel. I think so far the author is doing like a pretty good job at trying to explain these super complex issues and questions and battles and all the stuff that is taking place in cars in turkey where we are to basically an outside reader or someone like myself who really has no experience and no knowledge of these issues and of these plights and of the history and the geography and anything really the religious and political landscape and the tumult that is taking place in these landscapes these erosions these earthquakes these disasters that are raging across these um, unseen landscapes of the politics, the politics, yeah, and of um, religion and stuff like that. And right now it's manifesting kind of in this snowstorm, which has now enclosed cars. Actually, they've just closed down all the roads. So Ka and everyone in the city is trapped inside um, the city until they can clear the roads and it's described as kind of like this little fairy tale because it says as the neon sign of the border city gazette had created a small pocket of light in the darkness outside the giant snowflakes wafting slowly through the glow were the stuff of fairy tales one of the main issues that Ka has come to cars the city to see and to report on even though he's not actually a reporter is that many of the girls in cars have recently committed suicide basically one after another after another because they have recently been banned and prohibited from wearing their headscarves and therefore they have been kicked out of their educational centers of their schools of their universities because they are barred from entering the campus and the classrooms if they're wearing headscarves um, and so that's kind of being framed as what is causing them to commit suicide although of course there's so many more layers than just that issue and i think this book is really going to go into that because right now it's like like kind of staying on the surface and then i think we're gonna slowly go deeper and deeper and deeper <laughs> kind of like with the snow i think it's like a perfect perfect image and it's just so heartbreaking um and i think it's gonna be just so so good so that's what i've been reading today i've kind of put the audiobook down and i've tried to read for myself today from this because i just really want to there's just been so many quotes and so much about the darkness that is now in the city and he always says that they're at the end of the world they're at the last point on earth it's like he's crossed over into this darkness this void um it says that he came to feel as if they had entered a shadow world so when he was compelled to look at the snow outside, it blinded him. It was as if a curtain of tulle had fallen before his eyes, as if he had retreated into the silence of snow to escape from these stories of misery and poverty. It was as if he were in a place that the whole world had forgotten, as if it were snowing at the end of the world. So I think I'm gonna try to read a little bit more of this tonight. Right now what I wanna do is just kind of relax and fill out a little bit of my reading journal because I really wanna put down um, some of my, oh, that's March. We're in February still. 
I really want to put down some of my thoughts for my wrap up because I'm gonna have to film that pretty soon and I just want to yeah put some thoughts on paper I want to fill out like the little genre tracker my favorites the reading challenges like for the book clubs and stuff so I think that's what I'm gonna do and I'm still listening to Deadly Dreams right now. I think I'm gonna finish Deadly Dreams either tonight or tomorrow. Right now, at the part I am at Deadly Dreams, everything is sunshine and rainbows after 17 hours of very bad times as a reader. But now near the end, it's getting into sunshine and rainbows, but I know so many people say that the way Deadly Dreams ends just destroys them, and so I'm very, worried to get to the end. Maybe I'll just stop here <laughs> because I know I have to wait until December until the next one is out. So yeah, but that's what I'm going to do right now. <laughs> the thing happened. The thing happened in Fortuna Sworn. I know everything, everything is bad. I'm in so much pain. Why did KJ Sutton, why did you do this to me? I don't even want to finish it now. I can't wait until December. I think this is a book series. I'm definitely going to order them in paperback copy because I'm going to want to reread them because it's the kind of book that like, okay, I said there's like a bajillion characters, so many details, but then when you go back, like you can definitely see things that you would have missed the first way through. So I am going to do that eventually, but oh geez, I have like two hours left on the audiobook. Guys, I, I just don't know if I'm ready, if I'm okay, if I'm in a good place <laughs> to finish this book right now. It's just going to break my heart. I mean, it already did, but... Ah, oh, just when I thought, just when we thought things were fine. Good morning. Welcome to Thursday. This week is going by a little bit slowly. Um, it's noon. It's currently 12.08. I spent my morning basically getting done. A whole bunch of stuff for YouTube. I spent an inordinately long time answering emails and doing stuff like that. I don't know why it takes me such a long time, but I actually, uh, I'm just finishing up scheduling two videos to um, go live. So I feel very productive and that means I get a little break from editing and making thumbnails. I just finished making two thumbnails and yeah, I guess you're gonna see so much of me this week because I uploaded my Q&A on Sunday and then I did my regular Wednesday upload, which was a vlog, and then tomorrow, Friday, I'm uploading a Monday, kind of in my life day, just one day, and then Friday, uh, Saturday, <laughs> we have the Dark Academics live show on my channel, and then Sunday, it's a book haul. If you're sick of me, I'm so sorry, <laughs> but um, yeah, I just, I accidentally filmed, I didn't accidentally filmed, I was having a great time, I filmed too many videos, and so I have a lot to, to get out, but regardless, I'm about to finish up Fortuna Sworn this morning, I couldn't do it last night, I just, I needed to go to bed, and I did not get a good sleep, but one good thing is that I have the best clementines in my house at the minute, like, I bought a whole bag of them, and they are all just so good i don't know what my hair is doing it's currently falling out i'm very excited because these are so good they're just so good so i'm gonna eat this finish my coffee finish scheduling these videos and then i'm gonna just stretch do some yoga it's a brilliantly sunny day nothing in me really wants to read snow today because this is definitely not a light-hearted fun book at all <laughs> um and i'm in the mood i'm craving some respite some peace some happiness i'm kind of in the mood for like a happy middle grade honestly or even like a young adult because fortuna sworn is breaking my heart something ha i'm not gonna say what happened but i don't really love Colith anymore i know last vlog i declared my love for him but he's done some things that uh, i just i can't i'm i'm not on team Colith anymore I might be switching to Team Lori anyway. So I don't know if I'm gonna read this today because like I said, it's a sunny, wonderful day and I'm craving something happy. <laughs> I might start one of these books on my March TBR, although honestly, I'm not sure how happy any of them are. Maybe I'll just read more of the Pickwick papers today because that's funny. I don't know.
I think I made some friends. Good evening. It's not really a good evening. I have a broken heart. I finished Deadly Dreams this afternoon. I went from Team Colith to Team Lori, and now just, you know what? Remember how I said those things? We're just on no one's team now. There's no such thing as teams. The only person I love with my whole entire being is Fortuna. I just want her to be okay. I just, I'm really on, only on her team now. I'm only on Fortuna's team, which I should have been the whole time. And like I was, because I, I always say that I love her, but oh boy. Um, I'm in like a very big book hangover now. I've been so sad since finishing it, especially because the way that it ended, my heart is in tatters. Um, and I think I mentioned that the next book isn't out until I think like December, so... I don't know what I'm gonna do until then because the last like it, this whole book was just a roller coaster ride I just I have absolutely No idea what's just happened to me. Um, I can't I can't believe they've done this Oh, my heart hurts so much But it's also such a nice feeling to feel so involved with a book and to be so devastated when it ends because It's not really a feeling that I get with like classic literature or even literary fiction often that's a very different feeling of closing the book it's kind of a very um big feeling that makes your mind work a lot and makes you sift through everything you just read and when i finished 100 years of solitude that was like a moment i'll never forget but it wasn't this kind of moment this is the kind of moment where you feel like you just stepped out of a really like good movie and you just you don't know what you're gonna do with your life anymore like it's over um at least for now and like it's a very attached feeling because you care so much about the characters it's a very character driven reader emotion i think because in classics like well sometimes i like the characters but it's most just like it's mostly just a feeling of being so impressed and so like wow this was like an amazing book or was a very well written book and then the feelings whatever they may be tend to veer towards appreciation of the writing or literary elements whereas in a fantasy like this a fantasy romance um it's just a whole different kind of feeling and they are both equally valuable equally important never let anyone tell you that they aren't because oh, the series this series um if you haven't read it i would highly encourage you to do so i think it was a fairly recent release 2019 july 2019 um and it is a self-published i think it was originally a self-published ebook and yeah i would just highly recommend i my goal another one of my goals now is to really read more self-published books and more self-published authors because um that's something i would love to do they're just i don't know if they're harder to find but they're certainly not talked about as much but regardless if anyone is reading the book i don't know who my favorite characters are anymore <sighs> still fortuna i still i really love finn i really love liari i really love i mean i still kind of like Lori and colith but I'm not gonna say too much about that situation. Um, I really love, who else is in this book? There's so many people. There's so many different characters. This is definitely a fantasy series. I think this might be like the first fantasy romance or fantasy series that I will happily go out, purchase the physical copies and annotate them. I've never felt compelled or felt the need to, or want to annotate um, any YA or any fantasy, but like with this series, it just really impressed me. Um, as I was reading it, and one thing that I did manage to mark down in my reading journal, KJ Sutton's writing is the kind that is so perfectly married to the genre, at least in my personal opinion, it is just fantastic. Like I think her writing matches the genre 
beautifully and wonderfully and so perfect. It's like the exact amount of every kind of little writing ingredient you can throw into your writing to perfectly marry the genre that you are writing about, like the kind of dialogue, the explanation, the perspective, everything. I just think it's perfectly compatible with its genre and that's so satisfying and then on top of that to sprinkle on top of it I feel like the audiobook narrator's voice is also perfectly married to this writing and to this genre and to these books and it's just like a very satisfying entertaining well done thing where you feel like it's very natural I think I'm going to sit down and read Snow for the night because that's the only book I have on the go right now aside from Pickwick and I've already finished my section of that for today so just bouncing off of one heartbreak and into another I guess because Snow right now is also breaking my heart and oh, it's very heavy as well so yeah that's okay I'm still taking my time with it and um, I managed to do everything on my to-do list yes. okay Let's go. Let's go read. It is now Saturday, so I thought I should come on here and close off the vlog. I am just about to get into the Dark Academics live show. Um, literally in like 30 minutes, we start um, talking about Julius Caesar and the Furies, which I'm really, really excited about. My hair has gone very poofy, but that's okay. But I just wanted to sign off. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope this was fun. I had quite a lot of fun going to a thrift store again, picking up some books again, and yeah, I'm just so incredibly happy about it. So, um, I will see you very soon in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a really great day. Um, yeah, I just hope you're doing well, and I'm sending you all the love, so 